details tonight about the murder of a Colorado Springs mother of three. Her boyfriend is now in jail, accused in her brutal killing. Her young daughter hearing it all happen. Caradio News Channel 13 senior reporter Sydney Stell joins us live from the El Paso County Jail tonight. Though a warning, details of this alleged crime are hard to listen to. Sydney. Bart Heather, 32-year-old Douglas Hawkins, sits in a jail cell here behind me, charged with his girlfriend's murder. It's actually not the first time he's been put behind bars for hurting her. She tried to get away, moving halfway across the country here to Colorado, but recently she let him back into her life. Court documents paint a picture of a volatile relationship between 32-year-old Douglas Hawkins and 41-year-old Daisha Fry. Daisha's brother introduced the two. They knew each other from spending time in prison together. Hawkins served nearly five years for kidnapping and child rape in Washington state. The troubles seemed to start early, with Daisha's young daughter telling police she watched Hawkins choke her mom on two separate occasions, once while they lived in Washington and another time when they moved to Detroit together. He was arrested in Michigan for that incident, and while he spent time behind bars, Daisha fled with her children to live with her sister in Colorado Springs. Daisha recently let Hawkins back into her life. She hid him from her family, begging her young daughter not to tell anyone that she was spending time with him again. He would sneak in through her bedroom window to avoid Daisha's family seeing him. Then in the early hours of February 8th, Daisha's daughter said Hawkins was with her mom in her mom's bedroom when she heard a loud banging noise from the room, which she described as the sound of metal hitting something. She pushed the door open and found her mom bleeding from her head a metal bat sitting next to her. Hawkins, nowhere to be found. Her daughter called 911, but by the time first responders got there, it was too late. Police filed for a warrant to charge Hawkins with Daisha's murder three days later. He turned himself in a week after the murder. He's facing the possibility of life in prison without the possibility of parole if convicted. Now, Hawkins will be back in court next week. He is not eligible for bond right now. If you or someone you love may be a victim of domestic violence, we have resources posted to our website. So, insanity, insanity. God damn, people's got some real problems, you know. This is out of Colorado Springs, Colorado, El Paso County, the family of 41, Daisha Fry. R.I.P. Daisha Fry. R.I.P. Daisha Fry. She's going to get beaten to death. Uh, in the early hours of February 8th, 2022. And then Douglas Hawkins, 32-year-old Douglas Hawkins, that fucking degenerate fuck, he turns himself in. God damn. Why do women find these people and then introduced by the damn brother out of prison? Oh, here's somebody met out of prison. Jesus. And then had led him back into the life, but... Into her life, but... um. It's not the first time, right? So she's moved. She was in Washington and in D Detroit. Hawkins spent time in jail for a Michigan incident. And then Fry fled with her children to live with their sister in a house in North Colorado Springs off of Bugle Drive. Fry and Hawkins met when Fry's brother introduced the two. God damn. She's convicted of second-degree kidnapping and third-degree child rape. The victim of those crimes is listed as, listed as a 14-year-old girl. So, clearly a low-life, degenerate fucking piece of shit, right? Uh, perhaps he was just too too much pressure or something. She couldn't get rid of him. But um, February 8th, the daughter hears a metal, something allowed, you know, a piece of metal, like a baseball bat. Hitting somebody's skull, bashed her mother's skull in, and just, God, that had to have been horrifying. It had to be so traumatic to see your mother's face collapsed, you know, and then blood is going all over the place, and why, and for what purpose, you know, what, what purpose? And Hawkins wasn't in the room, so Hawkins took off. Took a baseball bat, smashed her head in. Killed her. Police filed a warrant to arrest Hawkins on first-degree murder charges. 
First degree, second degree, manslaughter. If he's convicted, he'll be sentenced to life in prison without the life in prison without the possibility of parole since it's a mandatory sentence. Fall into first degree murder. Second degree in manslaughter. I mean, I don't. Hawkins had another warrant out for his arrest out of Washington after failing to check in with his parole officer. Jesus Christ, this guy just keeps on getting worse and worse and worse. So R.I.P. Daisha Fry, R.I.P. Daisha Fry, Douglas Hawkins. Hopefully, you know, Daisha Fry gets some justice. He's been arrested. He's in jail. God damn, man. Is there, um... There's like another video. Let's click on another video here. A Colorado Springs mother of three is dead. And tonight her family claims the man just charged with her murder is someone she once knew very well. She was killed inside her home near Cottonwood Creek Park in Colorado Springs eight nights ago. Cardio News Channel 13 senior reporter Sydney Stell joins us now from the scene of the crime. Sydney. Daisha Fry lived here behind me with her family before she was killed on Tuesday of last week. Now her family is hoping that sharing her story may save someone else. Danise Johnson describes her cousin and lifelong friend Daisha Fry as being so full of light. She was a devoted being to everyone around her family, friends, neighbors, it, it didn't matter. A mother to three, a daughter, a sister, a friend. Danise says Daisha was selfless. She was really just bright loving and um kind there there was no negativity from her or towards her to my experience throughout life you know that's why this is such a shock police arrived at her colorado springs home in the middle of the night on february 8th to find daisha suffering from obvious trauma they couldn't save her it's wrecked her family as her killer remained on the run we've all been a real mess this entire past week not knowing really kind of where he is or where he would go, you know. But late Tuesday night, a week after her murder, police took 32-year-old Douglas Hawkins into custody, charging him with her murder. He's not eligible for bond until a judge takes a closer look at all the evidence in her case. We're going to continue to pray and see that justice is, is seen. Her family says Daisha used to be in a relationship with Hawkins and moved here to Colorado from out of state last year without him. Though he is just charged with her murder, not proven guilty of the crime, Denise believes this sheds light on the problem of domestic violence in our community and hopes her story encourages others to seek help if they need it. No one, no woman, no mother, no no child and extra family members should have these experiences. And, uh, and women and victims need to be protected. Now, if you or someone you love may be a victim of domestic violence, we have all the re New at four, the mother of three murdered last week in her own Colorado Springs home knew the man arrested last night for her death. That's what the victim's cousin is claiming tonight. Cardio News Channel 13 senior reporter Sidney Stell is live from the scene of the crime in North Colorado Springs near Cottonwood Creek Park. She joins us now with a warning from the victim's family. Sydney. Heather Mallory, 42-year-old Daisha Fry, lived here with her young daughter and her sister. It's where Springs Police say she died at the hands of a killer eight nights ago. The call came in to Colorado Springs Police around 2 a.m. last Tuesday. Police classified it as a domestic violence call. Tonight, 32-year-old Douglas Hawkins sits in the El Paso County Jail charged with Daisha's murder. I spoke with her cousin, Danise Johnson, who says Daisha lived with Hawkins in another state before she moved here last year without him. While Hawkins has only been charged at this this point not convicted, Johnson believes his arrest highlights the problem of domestic violence and hopes Daisha's story may save someone else. In honor of Daisha's legacy, I really, really, really would pray to see that victims are well informed of how they can seek help. This is common. 